There was a deal of concern around the initial reveal trailer for Saints Row in some corners of the internet. Seemingly taking a more serious tone than the wacky antics the series has come to be known for, the gameplay and other things were overshadowed by a strange sense of this isn't my Saints Row. As someone who loved the third and fourth entries in the series, I went into the rebooted game with an open mind to see if the latest entry in the Saints Row franchise is a worthy entry. The main story of the new Saints Row centres around, as ever, the boss. This is your own custom character, tailored to outrageous levels in the massively in-depth character creator. It's all about building a criminal empire in Santo Eliso, a loose approximation of Las Vegas and the surrounding areas. I'll be honest, I was a little bit unsure during the opening hour or two, which focused mainly on the boss's employ in a PMC called Marshall, before turning their head to the seedy underworld. It did feel a little bit straight-laced in places, with a super crazy opening mission giving way to a little bit more vanilla storytelling. Within a couple of missions though, I was lying on the back of a speeding vehicle, firing round after round into a pursuing horde of enemies while my partner tried to keep things steady. Oh, and I was in my pants. Because of course. As the game progresses, you take control of an old church, moving from the apartment shared with your crew, and you christen your new gang The Saints. Farewell, Third Street, we hardly knew thee. Honestly, as much as I'd like to have seen Sean D, Pierce and the rest, the switch to a new crew feels like a good move, and mostly saves the narrative from feeling like a retread of Saints Row 4 with a new coat of paint. Santa Eliso itself is a fantastic little open world, making each area feel like their own unique district while maintaining a cohesive element throughout. There are three main factions that you'll face during your time in charge of the Saints, with the Idols, Marshall and Los Panteros all offering up different threats, as well as naturally evading the long arm of the law. Missions are suitably varied, and you build up your empire by building new businesses throughout the city, opening up new revenue streams and the opportunity to get your hands on some extremely cool tech as well. A particular shout out has to go to Eli's LARP side quest, which sees you and your allies don cardboard armour and run around pretending to be characters with weapons that fire paper at each other. For the majority, it straddles that fine line between silly and stupid really well. My only real complaint with these side quests is that sometimes they can go on a little bit too long, and some are essentially rinse and repeat fetch quests with a gang shootout at the end. However, that doesn't stop them being fun. And that word fun played on my mind as I started to notice little inconsistencies throughout the game. Frame rate hitches, which have mostly been resolved with a patch I must say, some weird technical bugs and some downright broken AI at times made me take stock for a moment and put my critic hat on to take notes. However, for the most part, it didn't detract me from what Saints Row tries to do for the majority of its runtime. It just lets you have fun. Sure, there aren't the superpowers of Saints Row 4, but to me that's a welcome change. Things feel a little bit more grounded, but the soul of Saints Row is still in there. You can stuff a grenade down someone's pants and throw them at a bunch of their friends, but you can't run up walls and leap across the map in what turned out to probably be the best crackdown game on the market. Building your empire is satisfying, and as you progress, your HQ turns from a dilapidated old house of worship to a pimped out palace of decadence, complete with customization options. The story doesn't see you become the President of the USA and riding a nuke out of the White House, but this story doesn't need to. It's a new tale about a new gang in a new city, and it's got a certain degree of charm to it despite its, at times, crass subject matter. I mentioned previously that there were some technical issues while I was playing, and whether it was moments where mission checkpoints didn't trigger, certain menu options being unavailable, or a scope stuck on my screen until I restarted the game, things definitely felt rough initially. I should note, again, that subsequent patches have seemingly ironed out quite a few of these issues, but although I've not encountered them since, they were definitely there in the first place. While the game looks fine, I don't think it will be troubling our best looking category in the Game of the Year discussions when it comes to it either. It definitely feels like it's the kind of game that's releasing on all platforms. There are some graphical options available, ranging from 1080p up to 4K, and with the 4K option on the PS5 struggling to get above 30 frames a second, the sensible option for me is to go for the 1440p high frame rate mode. Initially, this had a habit of dipping quite a bit, but again, since a patch, it's been remarkably smooth, hovering around that magic 60 frames mark. We're aiming to have a comparison video up shortly so you can take a look yourself. 
There were no crashes to report, with only minor open world jank interfering with stuff, and the only real issue I had was a mid-game mission where a checkpoint didn't trigger, and I had to restart it to progress. Alongside the main story and the empire building, there's also a plethora of additional content to get your teeth into, as is the way with any open world game, and if you want 100% it, you will be spoiled for choice here. Whether it's clearing out enemy gangs, diving into golden dumpsters for new items, or drug running in a dune buggy, there's likely something here that will happily distract you from the critical path if you feel the need to take a break. And there is also, of course, a co-op mode which allows you to jump into missions with friends and dial the chaos up past 11. The Saints Row series has always been about putting fun ahead of everything else, and that's clearly evident here. While the concerns about a more grounded take on the madness aren't entirely unfounded, it's made for a much more modern take on the franchise, while maintaining the soul of what made people fall in love with it. While I did have a few technical issues, it rarely impacted on my enjoyment of the game. Saints Row dials back the stupid and embraces the wonderfully silly, and in turn it provides a very enjoyable experience. Thank you for joining us guys, if you've enjoyed this video please do drop us a like, leave us a comment and get subscribed to the channel because we're going to have a bunch more videos coming up very very soon. Alright, take care guys, bye bye.